ਡੀਅਰ ਸਟੂਡੈਂਟਸ ਫਿਜ਼ਿਕਸ ਪ੍ਰੈਕਟੀਕਲਸ ਦੀ ਇੱਕ ਹੋਰ ਕਲਾਸ ਵਿੱਚ ਤੁਹਾਡਾ ਸਵਾਗਤ ਹੈ ਅੱਜ ਅਸੀਂ ਦੋ ਐਕਸਪੈਰੀਮੈਂਟਸ ਨੂੰ ਪਰਫਾਰਮ ਕਰਨਾ ਸਿੱਖਾਂਗੇ ਅੱਜ ਦਾ ਪਹਿਲਾ ਐਕਸਪੈਰੀਮੈਂਟ ਹੈ ਟੂ ਡਿਟਰਮਿਨ ਦ ਮਾਸ ਆਫ ਅ ਗਿਵਨ ਬੋਡੀ ਯੂਜ਼ਿੰਗ ਅ ਮੀਟਰ ਸਕੇਲ ਅਤੇ ਦੂਜਾ ਹੈ ਟੂ ਡਿਟਰਮਿਨ ਦ ਵੇਟ ਆਫ ਅ ਗਿਵਨ ਬੋਡੀ ਯੂਜ਼ਿੰਗ ਲਾ ਆਫ ਪੈਰਾਲੋਗ੍ਰਾਫ ਇਹ ਦੋਵੇਂ ਐਕਸਪੈਰੀਮੈਂਟਸ ਜਿਨ੍ਹਾਂ ਦੀ ਅੱਜ ਅਸੀਂ ਚੋਣ ਕੀਤੀ ਹੈ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਰਾਹੀਂ ਅਸੀਂ ਬੋਡੀਜ਼ ਦੇ ਮਾਸ ਅਤੇ ਵੇਟ ਨੂੰ ਮੈਜ਼ਰ ਕਰਨ ਬਾਰੇ ਸਿੱਖਾਂਗੇ ਕਿਸੇ ਵੀ ਬੋਡੀ ਦੇ ਮਾਸ ਨੂੰ ਦੋ ਤਰੀਕਿਆਂ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਮੈਜ਼ਰ ਕੀਤਾ ਜਾ ਸਕਦਾ ਹੈ ਕਿਉਂਕਿ ਬੋਡੀਜ਼ ਦੇ ਮਾਸ ਨੂੰ ਦੋ ਤਰੀਕਿਆਂ ਨਾਲ ਡਿਫਾਈਨ ਕੀਤਾ ਜਾਂਦਾ ਹੈ ਆਓ ਮਾਸ ਦੀਆਂ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਦੋਵੇਂ ਕਿਸਮਾਂ ਅਤੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੀਆਂ ਡੈਫੀਨੇਸ਼ਨਸ ਤੇ ਇੱਕ ਨਜ਼ਰ ਮਾਰੀਏ ਪਹਿਲੀ ਹੈ ਇਨਰਸ਼ੀਅਲ ਮਾਸ ਜਦੋਂ ਕੋਈ ਬਾਡੀ ਗ੍ਰੈਵਿਟੀ ਤੋਂ ਬਿਨਾ ਕਿਸੇ ਹੋਰ ਐਕਸਟਰਨਲ ਫੋਰਸ ਦੇ ਪ੍ਰਭਾਵ ਤਹਿਤ ਟ੍ਰਾਂਸਲੇਸ਼ਨਲ ਮੋਸ਼ਨ ਵਿੱਚ ਹੁੰਦੀ ਹੈ ਤਾਂ ਬਾਡੀ ਦਾ ਮੈਜ਼ਰਡ ਮਾਸ ਇਸ ਦਾ ਇਨਰਸ਼ੀਅਲ ਮਾਸ ਕਿਹਾ ਜਾਂਦਾ ਹੈ ਇਨਰਸ਼ੀਅਲ ਮਾਸ ਨੂੰ ਡਿਫਾਈਨ ਕਰਨ ਦਾ ਇੱਕ ਹੋਰ ਤਰੀਕਾ ਹੈ ਉਹ ਇਸ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਹੈ ਇਫ ਅ ਗਿਵਨ ਫੋਰਸ ਪ੍ਰੋਡਿਊਸਸ ਐਨ ਐਕਸਲਰੇਸ਼ਨ a1 ਇਨ ਅ ਬਾਡੀ ਆਫ ਮਾਸ m1 ਐਂਡ a2 ਇਨ ਅ ਬਾਡੀ ਆਫ ਮਾਸ m2 ਦੈਨ m1 ਅਪਾਨ m2 ਇਜ਼ ਇਕੁਅਲ ਟੂ a1 ਅਪਾਨ a2 ਹੇਅਰ m1 ਐਂਡ m2 ਆਰ the inertial masses of the two bodies an inertial balance is used to measure the inertial mass of a body the second way in which mass can be defined is as the gravitational mass when a body is under the effect of gravity in the absence of motion the measured mass of the body is said to be its gravitational mass the gravitational mass of a body is measured by making use of a physical balance the two definitions of mass may initially lead to a misconception that the inertial and the gravitational masses of a body are entirely different from each other however Robert Dick of Princeton University proved in 1960 that two masses are equal within 3 parts in 10 raised to the power 11 therefore equality between inertial and gravitational mass is an established fact and in general instead of writing inertial or gravitational mass specifically we simply call and write only mass of a body let me now come down to the actual purpose of today that is let us now start with learning the measurement of an unknown mass with a meter scale using the principle of moments The objective of this experiment is to determine the mass of a given body using a meter scale by using the principle of moments. The apparatus which will be required for this experiment is a meter scale, a weight box and a given body. Let us now also know the theory that makes the basis of the working of this experiment. Actually, a meter scale can be used as a beam balance. I am sure you must be knowing that it works on the principle of moments. Can you recall the principle of moments? It states that bodies of equal weights when suspended from a beam at equal distance on two sides of its fulcrum 
keeps the beam horizontal. So, if A1 be the distance of unknown mass M1 from the fulcrum and A2 be the distance of the known mass M2, then mathematically the principle of moments can be written as A1 M1 into G equal to A2 M2 into G. As a special case, we keep A1 equal to A2. Then, mathematically, M1 will be equal to M2. Come, let me also disclose the procedure of this experiment. First of all, suspend a meter scale on an ordinary iron stand. Make small adjustments in the position of the thread until the meter scale rod is exactly in a horizontal position. Keep the thread somewhere close to the center of the meter scale, that is, at 50 cm mark. Your meter scale is now ready to measure small unknown masses. After this, suspend a given body by a thread at a fixed point on the left side and a paper pan at the same distance from the fulcrum of the meter scale. Keep the unknown mass on the left side of the fulcrum and then keep one of the approximated weights from the weight box in the paper pan on the right side of the fulcrum. In this case shown here, the first weight being put in the pan is 50 gram. Looking at the position of the meter scale, slowly add smaller weights to the paper pan one at a time. Here, a 10 gram weight is added to the paper pan and it has balanced the meter scale in horizontal position. You will have to do so until the meter scale becomes exactly horizontal. Note the total mass of the weights in the paper pan. In the example seen here, the total mass of the weights is 50 plus 10 that is equal to 60 gram. This total is equal to the mass of the unknown body. For the next reading, slide the thread of the unknown mass to a new position. This will increase the length of arm on the left side. Accordingly, shift the paper pan also to the same distance from the fulcrum of the meter scale as the unknown weight is. This will equalize the arm length on the right side also. Repeat the steps as told to you for the previous reading. Once again, keep adjusting the weights in the paper pan until the meter scale becomes horizontal. Note the mass of the weights in the pan just as you did earlier. Take at least three different readings for a single unknown mass, altering the length of the arms each time. Record all readings in the observation table. You can see a sample observation table here. And now, the calculations. Well, the calculations are very simple. You just have to calculate the mean mass M of the body in grams. If M1, M2 and M3 
be the masses of the body in the three respective observations then the mean mass of the body is equal to m1 plus m2 plus m3 divided by 3 as the mass of the body was 60 gram in the example you saw in each of the three observations the mean mass is 60 plus 60 plus 60 divided by 3 equal to 60 gram the result is concluded directly from the calculations it is just what you have calculated as the mean mass so the result will be written as the mass of the body m is equal to 60 gram es tarah vidyarthiyo tusi hune hi meter scale di help de naal kise unknown body de mass nu determine karan bare janya hai mainu vishwas hai ke hun tak तुसी इस फैक्ट तो जानू हो चुके हो कि किसे भी एक्सपेरिमेंट ते रिजल्ट दी एक्यूरेसी इस गल ते डिपेंड करती है कि तुसी प्रिकॉशंस दी इंपॉर्टेंस नो किन्ने ध्यान नाल समझया है जो कि हर एक्सपेरिमेंट दे नेचर ले स्पेसिफिक होंदे हैं मैं हमेशा ए फील करदी हां कि हर एक्सपेरिमेंट नो स्टार्ट करन तो पहला ही प्रिकॉशंस नो दस देता जाना चाहिदा है जहां उना दी लिस्ट बना देनी चाहिदी है ताकि जदों भी कोई एक्सपेरिमेंट कीता जावे ता उस समय इना नु गंभीरता नाल इंप्लीमेंट कीता जा सके बट इट हैज सिंपली बिकम अ कन्वेंशन टू लिस्ट देम टुवर्ड्स द एंड ऑफ एनी एक्सपेरिमेंट लेट अस आल्सो फॉलो द सेम कन्वेंशन एंड List the precautions to be followed for this very experiment. The precautions that we should take care for this experiment are Meter scale should be of uniform thickness Threads used should be weightless and strong And the possible sources of error are the calibration of meter scale may not be correct. Threads used may be thick and heavy. Hon, my agla experiment start kar di haan. Just a zikar, asi aaj de lesson de start which hi ki ta si. The objective for this one is to find the weight of a given body using Law of parallelogram and law of vectors. Among the apparatus that we will need to satisfy this objective are parallelogram law of forces apparatus, white drawing paper sheet, plumb line, the body of unknown weight, hangers with slotted weights. A half meter rod, a sharp pencil, a mirror strip, thin strong thread, drawing pins, set squares, a protector, and a spring balance. Let's now get acquainted with the theory of the said experiment. The law of parallelogram of vectors states that if the body of unknown weight S suspended from the middle hanger balances weights P and Q suspended from the other two hangers, then vector P plus vector Q plus vector S is equal to zero. This clearly implies that vector S is equal to minus of the sum of vector P and vector Q or vector S is equal to minus vector R where vector R is the resultant 
of the other two known weights. Thus, the unknown weight must have a magnitude equal to the resultant of the other two known weights. According to the law of vectors, the magnitude of vector r is equal to under root of square of p plus square of q plus twice pq cos theta. Ao hon is experiment the procedure we learn curly. To start with, set the board vertical by holding it in two clamps and check that the pulleys are frictionless. Board de upper, board pina di help naal ek white sheet lagao. Hon ek thread lo. Hate fir ek hor thread di knot is the center which lagao. Is thread no pulleys de upro lagao. Jena de ends de hanger lage hoi han. Thread the duja end body s de naal join kar deo. Hanger which holly holly odon tak slotted weights add karo jadon tak system paper di sheet te center which ditte point o te freely hang na karan lagge. Weights no suspend karan lay vartya gya hanger 50 gram da honda hai. Jadon vi kade total suspended weights no Hang ate count karo ta hamesha hi hanger the weight 50 gram consider zarur karo. Fair hanger on which appropriate size de weights no add karo. Sanu e sure karna hoega ke weights board nal touch na karan. E board ja table the reaction. Avoid current lay kita janda hai. Hun odon tak wait karo jadon tak weights steady na ho jan. A v ensure karna hoega ke point O equilibrium which hove ant which asi os position te ha jithon forces P ate Q the direction mark kiti ja sakti hai. Asi is no harek thread de thalle ek mirror strip lengthwise rak ke kar sakte ha. Ate apnia eyes no ajehi position which rak ke mirror strip de dono ends mark kar sakte ha. Jadon mirror strip which thread the image khud thread valon cover hove. Is te baad weights de Nal hangra ate ditti hoi body no ek ek karke remove karo. Strips te hitle pase mark points no joro. Ona no odon tak vadao jat tak o ek common junction point te meet na kar jan. Man lo ke common point o hai. Now we will choose a suitable scale to indicate the forces so that we may get a considerably large parallelogram. This should have sides long enough to be easily measured. For example, we may choose 1 cm equal to 50 gram weight. Using the common point O, Measure the lengths OA and OB, which obviously represent the corresponding forces P and Q. In the example set here, the length OA is measured as 3 cm. Similarly, the length OB is measured as equal to 3 cm. You are now expected to complete the parallelogram OACB and draw the diagonal OC and measure this too. The diagonal OC represents 
the resultant of forces P and Q. In the present case, the measurement of OC comes out to be equal to 3.4 cm. Please do not forget to mark the arrowheads to indicate the direction of forces. We now calculate the force represented by OC. It should be equal to the equilibrium of weight S. We have now completed one set of observations. The whole set is now to be repeated for at least two more times for different sets of forces. Then find the value of s using them also and now the calculated weight of the object has to be verified this can be easily done with the help of a spring balance here in this case the spring balance is reading the weight of the given body as 170 gram then is the turn to understand the observations that we have to note down. First of all, note the scale chosen for the measurement of forces. The observation table for the example set here is to be made like this. The needy calculations are actually made while completing the observation table itself. But this is how it is done. We have the measured length of the diagonal OC as equal to 3.4 cm. Multiplying it by the value of each centimeter from the scale chosen, we can write the effective resultant force R as equal to 3.4 into 50, which turns out to be equal to 170 gram weight. Thus, the value of the unknown weight S is found equal to 170 gram weight. The weight measured by the spring balance is equal to 170 gram weight. The difference between the two observations is zero. So, the result is written as weight of the given body S as obtained by spring balance is equal to 170 gram weight. Weight of the given body obtained by vector addition method is equal to 170 gram weight. Thus, the percentage error is equal to 0%. Let us now know the precautions that we were supposed to follow while performing this experiment. The board should be stable and held vertical. The pulleys should be frictionless. The weights should hang freely and should not touch the board. The junction O should be in the middle of the paper. Arrows should be marked to show direction of forces. The direction of forces should be marked with the help of a mirror strip placed lengthwise. The pencil used for indicating the directions of forces should be sharp. The most probable sources of error are Pulleys may have friction. Weights may not be accurate. Points may not be marked correctly. Finally, let me give you some idea 
about the type of questions related to this experiment that can be asked during its viva. My first question is, what is a true balance? The answer says, a balance which has arms of equal length and pans of equal weight is called a true balance. Its beam is horizontal with empty pans and also when equal weights are put in the pans. The next question is, name a phenomena in which both the inertial mass and the gravitational mass of a body take part. The answer is, in simple harmonic motion of the bob of a simple pendulum, both the inertial and the gravitational masses of a body play their part. The gravitational mass provides the restoring force, whereas the inertial mass controls the acceleration of the bob. My next question is, what are you measuring using the principle of moments, mass or weight? How can you distinguish mass from weight? The answer says, we are measuring the mass of a given body in this case. Mass is the amount of matter contained in a body, whereas the weight of a body is the force with which the body is pulled towards the center of earth. The next question is, what do you understand by the resting point of a balance? The answer is, the resting point of a balance is the point or position on the scale at which the pointer will come to rest when the beam stops oscillating. The next question is, what is meant by a resultant force? The answer is, it is the single force which shall bring the same effect as the combined effect of all the individual forces acting on the body. Another question is, state the condition under which an object may be in equilibrium under the influence of three coplanar forces. The answer says, an object is said to be in equilibrium under the influence of three coplanar forces if these three forces acting on it may be represented by the sides of a triangle taken in order. The next question is, why is it advised to keep the suspended weights free from the board or the table? The answer is, this precaution is desired to be followed in order to avoid the reaction from the board or the table. My next question is, what is the principle of working of a spring balance? The answer says, a spring balance works on the fact that when a body is suspended from a vertical spring, the body produces extension in the length of the spring proportional to its weight. Menu umhid hai ki tusi aaj sikhaye gaye dono experiments da pura pura lab land de naal ina nu enjoy vi kita hona hai. Aaj de lesson te tyan den le tuada tanwad. Agli class vich hor nave experiments de naal fer milange. Tad tak Take care, study well 
and good luck until then.